we had elaborated a lot on what are the failure modes and what do we mean by failure modes and we said that modes mainly means the causes of this failure so we have many causes for one failure and we said that the meaning of the world mode means how the failure occurs so that's how it occurs so after that we need to go to make some examples of may, uh, stipulating or putting in the table the failure modes but before going to this which will be in our coming lecture today we are going to speak about how to set the boundaries of the system that i'm going to record the failure modes in that's a very important approach because setting the system as we said very wide will make hundreds of failure modes and it will be difficult to trace making it very narrow will be very difficult to trace or to get the detailed failures inside and we are going to work through this with examples so we are not going just to make it literature today that's the examples of setting the boundaries of the systems or the subsystems that we are going to describe their failure modes in the coming lecture so as we can see in these simple illustrations do i need to study all this equipment together no you don't have to but you might have to if you cannot separate the system but if you can it's better to put boundaries and to study any system and to put some intake and outtake of each system okay so failure modes are how the failure occurs so to understand how the failure of a sub part or part of the system any gear or any special gear any set of gear any circuit breaker any sensor to be able to study how this part fails i should be able to describe the function of this part so when i know the function of this specific part i can say how this part fails and when i say how this part fails or how this function fails i can say what are the causes of this failure and these causes should be in hand should be approachable so i can approach this failure and repair it and change this part and put a countermeasure for preventing this failure from occurring again without my control or without the time i had uh, assigned so that's the analysis that we are going to do or that's the rcm analysis simply you analyze the function the function failure when this failure occurs or how this failure occurs what are the causes the modes of this failure and then i'm going to prioritize the failures and put some time schedule or some simply set this failure as not needed or has no maintenance no needed maintenance or no scheduled maintenance is needed okay so the target is to make a model that can make us easily understand the how we can analyze them as the failure mode so the the standard or the traditional examples usually you will find are the examples of a pump a pump a pump skid or a conveyor system because those are the most common parts we are going to speak about this and we are going to speak about electrical systems you will find very rare speaking about electrical systems also still making plans you will not find publicly um, published analysis for the failure modes and so on about the electric steel making plants that needs to be done only by the people working in the steel plants and it's not very popular to find it uh, a a public or a published uh, on the internet we are going to speak mainly about the electrical systems you will not find a lot of uh, studies about the failure system so we're going to visualize what we mean by the failure system and what we mean by pump skid for as a public or a nearby example so if you are not le uh, related to the electrical part it the pump skid uh, example will be more related to you. so when we say that uh, the system or the electrical system i need to study i need to understand what is the electrical system and how to put the boundaries inside the electrical system for example if because whether you are in the electrical side in the mechanical side in the electromechanical side you approach some electrical system the electrical system includes part of the system is a distribution system the distribution system is on two sides there are some electrical distribution panels and there are some motor control centers which provides uh, or receives the on off signals from the plc or any digital controller even from the manual system from the operator start stop and gives the start stop orders to give power to the motor directly or to the flap directly to operate or to conveyor directly to start whatever and but before that there is the electrical distribution system 
which uh, includes uh, an enclosure panel with some circuit breakers, incoming cables, main distribution, and then outgoing cables up to the location of the uh, of the panels or up to the location of the motor control center or up to the location or of the uh, pump skid or the air compressor or the conveyor uh, system control itself. So there is a distribution and there are the, there is the local controls or the local motor control or even as the remote motor control depends on the organization of your system how the system is required the very important thing when we want to make some system boundaries is that we need to make sure that when i divide my system into sub systems i don't overlook any part so every part in my system should be included in one of the sub systems so i should understand the complete system and then when I divide it into sub systems I need to understand or I need to make sure that every component is included inside the system so when the component is included inside the system I make sure that I can test it this does not mean that I it, there should be some maintenance activity recorded as a result of the uh, reliability centered maintenance when this component is included in the maintenance system in the, uh, in the subsystem no it just that it is not overlooked if it needs some maintenance activity it will be recorded as uh, as as maintenance activities who will do it and its schedule and its need and its priority and so on if there is no needed based on the analysis it will be labeled no scheduled maintenance is needed for this system so if we turn again to the electrical distribution there is the uh, panel there is the incoming uh, circuit breaker there is the main circuit breaker which is distributed to some uh, uh, internal breakers and th some sensors and indicators and so on the very important some uh, question that i need to ask myself can i do a repair or replace or this part that i will include as a detailed part of my subsystem for example if i used the electrical panel as a subsystem so i will include the electrical breaker circuit breaker or switch as the main part or as the least part that i'm going to study or i'm going to study the internal parts of the circuit breaker itself so is there a difference somebody works yes i give you two uh, examples on this there's two approaches in some uh, working location i was working we were let's just say uh, having some maintenance contract for this management and maintenance contract for this place and then the cost of the main, the, the, the management uh, contract we're having a some fixed cost and this fixed cost uh, we should manage this work location within this fixed cost so the cost of everything was included in this maintenance cost so there are two things i need to ensure that the maintenance is done perfectly so i can deliver the production continues and we deliver output because we receive uh, uh, some percentage based on the tonnage that are produced with a minimum of course because if the plant is stopped due to reasons that not attributed to the management company we should receive our salaries and the minimum uh, cost of the company or the minimum profit of the company so we need to have the minimum cost internally but this minimum cost for the bus should ensure that the, the production is delivered so in during working with this company we were repairing the circuit breaker internal parts itself so when we are studying the causes of failures and the actions or the maintenance activities we need to do and the parts we need to replace we were considering the auxiliary contacts of the circuit breakers we were considering the springs inside the circuit breakers the contact we were considering trimming mechanism inside the circuit breaker and so on so our study analysis will go deep to the internal parts of the circuit breaker while in another company which was major steel uh, plant manufacturer we were the the top priority of the company itself was the uh, time or the production time and the quality of the maintenance and many other kpis that does not include the cost the cost we was a part but it was not on the focus uh, so and it, the cost was calculated based on changing the complete whole part with a new part it was very seldom that we repair inside parts of some breaker or some part we, especially when there's problem of the delivery there's problem uh, of the costing during this period or the cash to make orders for spare parts and so on so we were coming back to the old parts and repairing some parts and putting them partially and putting them under co co uh, yani under monitoring and so on but usually we were replacing them with new part that was the cost scheme of this company but the cost scheme of another company was to repair the internal parts inside 
the circuit breaker. So that's two different schemes. You need to understand the scheme of uh, your workplace. You need the cost is the minimum is to have a minimum cost. So we need to repair the internal parts. So that's my limit of study of analysis of the electrical circuit breaker. If I should replace the part completely, that's the minimum study of my analysis. So we need to understand this part when we are putting the boundaries and we are listing the parts. So we put the boundaries and we list the internal Parts. So, for example, if you go to uh, a pump uh, a skid or a set of conveyor uh, that are supplied from an electrical distribution panel, the function of the electrical panel itself, if you go to the electrical panel, we consider the electrical power distribution to the pump skid or the conveyor as our subsystem. So, the main function of the electrical a distribution panel is to provide electrical power to the pump skid or the compressor or the set of conveyors and so on. But there are many secondary functions that we need to include in our analysis because this secondary functions affects the main function of providing the electrical power supply to the pump skid. The secondary functions are safely enclosing the electrical power distribution breakers. So it should be safely enclosing them, protecting them from being approached by the people while they are active or and preventing any rodents or any rain or dust to enter the pan. So it should provide safe access to the maintenance technicians. It would, should provide some clear feedback from the labeling and the, so I know this breaker for this motor and this breaker for this conveyor and uh, I have a clear indication on, uh, on the external of the panel that of the, about the condition of the circuit breaker that one circuit breaker is stripped, one circuit breaker is off, one circuit breaker is on and so on. All this from outside. There should be is safe isolation. It's when I de decide to do some maintenance, I need to make some safe isola isolation for the parts inside. It should protect the mechanical load, so the circuit breaker should protect the uh, the end line, so it's providing a pump skid, so it should protect the pump skid. Some failure on the pump skid is not tripped, I should trip or should should be sim um, simultaneous tripping. At the same time, we trip the download and the upload uh, breaker. There will be some auto switching off for the loads, in some current leakage, maybe some earth leakage, some so afraid of the protection of the people and the equipment. So any earth leakage, the main breakers mainly are provided with some earth leakage protection for current leakage, limiting the uh, the current withdrawing. So if there is extra power controlling, I don't know it's short circuit or something, I should trip and protect. All these are secondary functions, but they are uh, leading to some main failures or some to main functions. So. In the coming lecture, we will start listing down the function failures one by one and describing them for this electrical distribution. And as I told you, now we have an idea what is the, your main target from distributing the system into a system and subsystem is to provide an isolation for each system. So I can study it in, in includes all the functions and all what is affecting the function. And I should make its boundaries so I can reach and the limit of the analysis is the how far I can go with my repair or with min maintenance task. If there's visible maintenance task I can make, so I can study this part, its failures and failure modes. If there's no visible maintenance task, I do not study this part. I stop before this. I stop before this part. Thank you for following so far. With us for the coming uh, insights about the failure modes and practical example about list filling the table for the failure modes and the failure and the failures and the functions of. Uh, the electrical panel that's in the coming lecture join subscribe you can join our trainings on udemy you'll find the links in the description box also if you need some uh, personalized or customized training or customized services you can find this in the links in our web store see you in coming chats and talks stay safe